It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. <coughs> it starts with some beer, so you shouldn't have fear. Two garbage guys with facts, but they both still have tact. It's that time at last for the best damn podcast. It's Can Crusher Day. And welcome to Can Crushers. I am your host, Mark Martinez, and it's time for a spotlight. And guys, wait a minute. Pump your brakes, pump your brakes. It is season two, episode one. We made it one year without killing each other, so that's enough. But it is time for a spotlight. And for a whole year, I have been trying to get this man on the show. Finally, I reach out to his wife. So I know who's in control of IWC now. I reach out to his wife, Jenny Plummer, and I say, Jenny, Super Indy's coming up. We need to get Justin on the show. And she's like, yeah, we, we can make this happen. We can make this happen tonight. And it happens instantly. So, guys, I am so happy to announce, after a year of all my shenanigans, bugging Justin, doing handstands at Court Time Sports, anything that I had to do to get him on the show, guys, we are so happy that both Justin and Jenny Plummer, the owners of IWC Wrestling in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, finally join can crushers guys when i talk about these guys they are friends they are family they they have done so much for my son the english professor's son and now friends of friends are coming to this this is one of the greatest organizations that are out there it, it is just awesome the talent is amazing. The locker room, they'll do anything for you as well. You just see so many wrestlers on TV now that a couple years ago were in IWC. And guys, I'm going to send this over to the interview. But first, we're going to send it out to a quick call or an elbow break. And then when we come back, we're talking to Justin and Jenny Plummer of IWC. And it's about Super Indie, guys. So it's pretty freaking awesome. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand a brand founded on the aspects of wrestling two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere collar and elbow is the brand passion and love for wrestling is the drive I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back to Can Crushers. Guys, this has been a year in the making. Oh my God, I'm so excited to tell you that Justin and Jenny Plummer have finally join the show and it's perfect timing because super indie 18 is right around the corner plumbers welcome to can crushers hello hello hey mark what's up it's good to be here it's about time yeah. it's about time right i ran out of excuses tonight tonight was the first time i couldn't come up with something no the thing is i went right to your wife is what it was and she was the one she's like okay <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'll sit right here until you're on the on the phone. I'll sit here with you until you call. So here we are. 
<laughs> I, I finally had enough gall to go to Jenny to make this happen. <laughs> That's usually what happens. <laughs> so, guys, if you don't know the Plumbers, they own the International Wrestling Cartel. And just to step aside from Can Crushers, these two are two of the greatest people in the world. They have been like an aunt and an uncle to my son, to the other Can Crusher English professors' kids. They are just fabulous people. They have three kids of their own, and they – uh. They are very family oriented, and I just like to say they're friends. They really are friends of us. Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Mark. That's so kind. It it, it is. Uh, before even getting into the can crushers, you know, we had a a little bit of a history just going to IWC, IWC, IWC. I, you guys got sick of me, um, but it was just always so welcoming. Uh- Jenny would just give a hug all the time. Oh yeah, you and your family. I love you all. You're going to say something, Justin, some smart remark? No, no, I'm behaving. Okay. <laughs> so far, so far. Yeah, it's been quite some time. I mean, we're probably going on like four or five years of knowing each other now, right? It's about five. It really is. And there was a stretch there that it was like three straight years in a row that my wife was so happy. Once a month I was heading to Pittsburgh or, you know, White Oak or somewhere that uh, I didn't miss a show. But now it's not that I'm missing shows. It's just I have other obligations. I don't want to say bad. For sure. I completely understand. And even, you know, it's funny. As time passes being an adult, I feel like, I don't feel like the passing of time happens until I look at children and even seeing how much your, your son, Ethan has grown the last five years. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, for sure. It it really is. He, uh, he was scared of Bill Collier. Uh, Jimmy nuts was his best friend and it's, it's just changed it. Now he likes Chris LaRusso for some unforsaken reason. I guess somebody has to. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk about that, right? Oh, sure. All right, so let's get into uh, you guys. Uh, let's go way back when it's a little Justin, a little Jenny. How did you guys, who in, showed you guys wrestling? Was it grandma, grandpa? Was it aunts, uncles? Uh, each one of you tell a little story about how you guys got involved in loving this sport. Gonna go first. Yeah. I don't really have much of a story. I um at the daycare I went to they had little rubber thumb wrestlers and I think they had Hogan and the Iron Sheik and it was just two toys that I like to play with. And then saw on TV one Saturday morning guys that looked like the toys that I played with at daycare. So my family wasn't into it, my friends really weren't into it. Uh somehow I stumbled onto it and I got into it right around the time uh probably a couple months after the ultimate warrior had become WWF champion. So, you know, with the colorful characters of that time, you could really get sucked in as a kid. And, uh, I was a Hogan guy the whole way, you know, just like many, you know, I'm 34 now. So a lot of people in my age range grew up on Hogan and, and all of his various feuds. Um, you know, and then my, my friends began to get into it too and everything, but, uh, no uh, family stories, nothing with grandma or grandpa or dad. As a matter of fact, my dad is very uh, unfond or non-fond of wrestling, but it's growing on him a little bit now that he's seeing the business side of it and how, you know, things can work and how, you, you know, we can find happiness and success in it. He's starting to grow on him a little bit. That would probably change, though, if one of the grandsons were in the ring. He would instantly jump to uh, being a number one fan, wouldn't he? Oh no, God! He would, uh, he'd be pissed. He would if they ever got. Oh man, he'd kill me. He would kill me. He was pissed. He's he's pissed when I just get close to the ring. You know, he doesn't like seeing me in there. So uh, okay, but he's rarely around, so that's all right. <laughs> Those some wrestlers. He's, really, he's an incredible grandfather and father. He's rarely around wrestling, is what I mean. Just in case he's hearing this. <laughs> right? You're ba- you're burying yourself about your dad right off the bat. That's awesome. <laughs> it's been a long day, Mark. We're tired. <laughs> I, I can tell. I, I understand. So, uh, Jenny, how did how did your uh, love for wrestling come about? Um, it started slow. It actually, um, growing up, I, this is one of those things that, 
may or may not surprise people, but growing up, I didn't have cable. Um, my parents, we really didn't have a lot of money. And so some of the things that were like luxury items, like cable TV and stuff, we just didn't have, but on basic cable, um, my sister and I shared a room and I remember when we were in high school, we would watch, you know, we would watch TV at night. We'd flip through like maybe 10 channels that we had. And some of the things that were on were wrestling and my like favorites were I love Billy Kidman. I love Sid Vicious. And we would like, but we would watch it in a different manner because my sister and I were teenage girls and we'd be like, Oh, look how cute he is. He's so hot. <laughs> like kind of like that. And then uh, whenever I got into college, I started dating this really handsome man named Justin Plummer who loved wrestling and we would always just watch wrestling together. And so it was kind of one of those things where I didn't hate wrestling. Um, you know, my sister and I enjoyed watching it together whenever I was a teenager. And then, um, you know, as my love for Justin grew, my love for wrestling also grew and we would go, we would just watch so much stuff together. And we would, you know, watch old Royal Rumbles, old WrestleManias, old Survivor Series. And at night we would have on different, they used to have an on-demand channel whenever we first started living together and stuff like that. And we had that channel and we'd put stuff on, documentaries on, we'd fall asleep to it. So it was always just really comforting to me. That that on demand channel uh, I loved kind of better than the WWE network right now. I can, I had it too. Yeah, it was so much better than the network because I liked the documentaries and stuff that were on it. Exactly. Well, and because there was limited content, you felt like you had to, like you were more into it. Now that you could watch anything anytime, it's kind of like when you go on Netflix. You end up just scrolling forever and end up not watching anything because you can't pick. But when that channel was around and you only had maybe like eight old events to go through, it was like, you know, and you knew you only had a few weeks to get them in. You watched them. You watched them now. Yeah. So you, you named some of your favorites growing up. And Jenny, I'm going to call you out. Billy Kidman and Sid Vicious. I, it, you, you thought they were cute? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you ended up with Justin because those other two were wow, rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Mark. <laughs> it, it it really is. It really is. At least Justin's a good looking guy. I'll just leave it at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so tell everybody how you got into the wrestling business then um, kind of a backstage type of deal thing. And then boom, you're the owner. That's not how it goes. All right. So, I mean, it, it's kind of a long story, but the abbreviated version is just basically, I was what? 26 or 25, 27, 27. <laughs> it's only been that. Long. Okay. Um, and it was just like, I felt like, you know, I had a steady job. I, was married i owned a house we were talking about starting a family uh i finished grad school or i was working on grad school at the time and it was kind of like well i'm doing everything i always really wanted to do like those were my main goals i didn't have any like crazy crazy goals growing up it was always just because i had such a good family i just wanted to have a family kind of in the image of my own and and raise kids the way that my parents raised me and i'm like well i'm well on my way to doing this and so what like what now what like what's what's next like what happens after i get to that point and so i always loved wrestling and i had no experience working in wrestling though of course and um just through the family i knew the owner knew the owners of court time which is where iwc has been running for i think 11 or 12 years at this point now and um they had said they gave me bad information they said you know the ring announcer just quit but the it turns out that was like year a year old information because that's when uh, Chuck left ring announcing to take over the company, Chuck Roberts. So anyways, I called Chuck and uh, probably left him a voicemail every two or three days for three weeks straight until he finally called me back. And uh, just long story short, we had a phone call. I remember he was like, 
have you ever been to an independent wrestling event? I, I've said I've been to two. He said, have you ever been to an IWC event? No. Have you ever seen any of our DVDs or, or online videos? No. And he said, all right. And I'm thinking, well, I just blew it. <laughs> I should have I should have made something up. But uh, it turns out he wanted to, you know, he actually preferred that because I guess, I guess he got a lot of fans that would want to kind of make the transition uh, into into some sort of backstage role. And sometimes that could be tough. So uh, I didn't hear anything for a little while. I mean, uh, you know, I sent him my Facebook page because he just wanted to, like, check check out who I was, make sure I wasn't any kind of killer, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think it was – I was at the – I was actually – it was March Madness, I think, right? Because I was at – like, once a year I go out with my dad and his buddies – and we watched the first round of March Madness on like the Thursday or Friday. And so I'm at the bar during the day and I get a call from Chuck asking if I could go to Clearfield and ring announce the following day. And I'm like, crap, I better like stop drinking, get home, like rest up. This is my big chance because Pedro, who was a ring announcer at that time, was sick. So um, I got home and talked to Jen and there was actually a lot of crazy stuff going on in my personal life at the time, which made it extra difficult. But I was like, this is it. Like, I get this chance, and it's do or die here. So I just got to suck it up, block it all out, and go. So we made the trip up there the next day, you know, two and a half hours or whatever. And I got in there, and it was just – luckily, see, I, I Gene Taylor, uh, who's with Ring of Honor now, is uh, was my fraternity brother in college. So he was with IWC at the time, and that really helped a lot because he kind of gave me the locker room etiquette run down and uh, – vouched for my credibility, you know, on a, from a professional level and a respect level. So he helped, but I was still intimidated as hell when I got there and we're talking Clearfield, which now you look at and it's like, that's probably the smallest events that we run. For but sure. when I got in that, ring, when I got in that ring in Clearfield, it was, uh, it was like the, the, the end of the world to me. Like this was like as big as it gets. It meant so much. Uh, I was just in awe. Like here I am in a professional wrestling ring doing ring announcing, this is what I've waited my whole life for. And it meant the world to me. And everything really went well. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, Pedro has that job. And so there wasn't really much for me to do. But Chuck liked me enough that he wanted to keep me around and just find things for me to do. And I really was willing to do whatever. I mean, I, you know, even the dirtiest of work, uh, setting up, tearing down, picking guys up at the airport, driving guys back to the airport at 2 in the morning, whatever needed to be done, I'd do it. And then um, we were exploring getting back on television, and he put me in charge of that. And that's when I met a couple, like guys like Lavar and a couple of, of those types of people, and just realized that television just wasn't the way to go anymore. And that's when we came up with just going onto YouTube and doing the web show. Started AfterShock. Over the years, I taught myself video editing and and uh, really invested a lot of time and money into that. And one t- uh, eventually, the day came where Chuck, you know his his life priorities became uh number one and he said i'm either shutting this place down or i'm going to hand it over to you we jen and i just had our second kid at the time right or mm-hmm. he was on his we way about to have jericho and so it was like oh man this is going to be brutal this is not the time but i loved the locker room so much i loved the fans so much and i couldn't picture western pennsylvania without an iwc so we talked, and it was just like, let's bite the bullet, and let's do this, and let's just dive in. Um, so I knew probably about like nine, nine months, ten months in advance of when it was actually, you know, actually done. So I got a little bit of a crash course, but uh, through some, you know, we took over, had some growing pains, had learned some hard lessons, but uh, ultimately had a lot of fun. Yeah, t- and turned and things around, and fun. yeah, here we are now, just growing at a at an incredible rate which i can't believe is happening and it seems i'll be working out for the time being i would say our biggest eye-opener is just how much work is involved and i think about this on a very regular basis chuck and norm did a phenomenal job on their own i can't imagine what that would have been like all by yourself because we split a lot of the duties i'll handle a lot of like the um business end kind of like with everything up in the front and then a lot of like the administrative stuff Justin will handle a lot of like the talent stuff and both of us I feel like it's a lot for each of us to do I can imagine doing all that in one person 
Yeah, you guys, uh, two man group. Uh, if you look at, let, let's say WWE, they have so many writers for this. They have so many financial operators. They have so many everything. You know, even down to the littlest uh, of big indies, uh, look at Impact and everything. With two people running the show, you guys are actually pulled against each other at some point, but you're also having to mesh together, right? Yeah, and I mean, another side of that, too, is like it frees up a lot of my time to put focus you know and you know it's not just wrestling there's just so much else that goes on but it gives me time to creatively come up with some unique ideas that otherwise i would be bogged down with you know the administrative stuff uh reaching out and getting the level of talent from across the country that we've been getting into it's not like you could just you know everybody's phone number and you can just call them up and talk to them. That takes a lot of work to find out who's the right people to talk to. And can you actually get to these people? Like the goal, you know, is to actually talk to them in person because when a lot of these guys, not I'm kind of getting off topic, when a lot of these guys uh, meet Jen and, and I, I think they see that we're different than a lot of other promoters are used to dealing with. So they're much more willing to work with us. So with Jen doing a lot of that work and freeing up my time to try to build relationships and network, with uh, other influential people across the country, uh, that has helped us uh, a ton. I mean, absolutely a ton. Yeah, it really has. And just getting back real quick, uh, you told your guys' story, kind of so recapping, you told you guys' story how to get into IWC, and then you just took us on the whole ride of IWC. So thanks for taking half of my segue away, which is awesome. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys have a show uh, coming up June 15th. It's a week away, uh, podcast time, at Court Time Sports, and it's called Super Indie 18. Before we get into that show itself, let's talk a little bit about the Super Indie title. It is started in 2002, and it's traveled the world, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's been defended in different countries. It's been defended by multiple WWE champ, you know, and not at the time, but they would go on to be champions in the WWE champions uh, as this motorcycle drives by here. Sorry, we're outside. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's the best thing about podcasts. They happen anywhere. <laughs> well, the kids are inside and it would just be nonstop like <coughs> mommy. But, uh, so anyways, yeah, the, uh, really how they found too. <laughs> the super indie title, it's been defended in multiple countries. It's been, uh, won and defended by guys that have gone on to hold championships in the WWE and NXT and ring of honor. That's something we're really trying to push on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook is just showing the history and lineage of the talent and athletes that have held this title. And, uh, DJ Z, who is one of our guys that was just signed to WWE and is debuting in NXT, I think maybe tonight or tomorrow. Tonight. Uh, his write up on WWE.com specifically referenced the Super Indie title and the history and lineage of some of the incredible performers that held that title, which was just so cool to see. And, you know, that's not just uh, special for us, but, you know, even looking back to what Chuck did and what Norm did to get an independent wrestling championship uh, to the level of notoriety that that championship has been raised to. Yeah, and you, you said DJZ, but you have to name some of the other names. You know, you have AJ Styles, Colt Cabana, Chris Saban, John McChesney, which is an icon within Pennsylvania himself, correct? Yeah, John McChesney is probably the biggest star that uh you know over time maybe not currently but of all time that uh iwc has ever had and beyond i mean he's even up in erie they love him there uh, uh you know and then you got to look like the biggest one of the biggest names on smackdown right now uh, eliot was a former super indie champion for some time yeah um, i was gonna say uh, Eli got... elias jerry lynn uh the, the sammy callahan rj city uh, Wardlow has it now. It, it, you know, the list continues to go on. And even Dylan Bostic, I'll mention him, but even Dylan Bostic had it a couple times too, right? Dylan Bostic, Tony Nese, who's doing wonderful for himself right now. 
And, you know, when he held that title, you knew watching him there was something special. So it's cool to see him getting a, a lot of opportunity. So this title means a lot. You know, it's very prestigious. Oh, we forgot about somebody else, baby, but I just can't think of who it was. Oh, it's Adam Cole. Yeah, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Cole and uh, potentially a, a week from tonight, uh, somebody very close to Adam Cole, Brittany Baker, the first female to ever enter in 18 years in the Super Indy Tournament, could uh, make history and not only be the first – female to win the super neat title but maybe that would be the first couple to hold the title together uh mm-hmm. over time i don't know yeah that's ground guess, that's groundbreaking <laughs> <laughs> we both cut each other off would you say i, I guess it probably would be uh yeah but then you know yeah you, you, I'm, I'm looking at the list now just to like jonathan gresham how good has he been in the past few years like and when is this guy going to just break out? He's actually starting to. He's in Japan right now doing incredible things. But, like, he is one of the best uh, technical wrestlers I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, so to have him in the finals three years in a row and as the winner and champion last year was just incredible. Uh, guys like RJ City, who, you know, up in Canada is all over television every week, uh, come down here and be able to hold that title. Uh, another one that you're actually forgetting about, and it was probably one of my favorite Super Indie Championship matches of all times. Technically, one of the best matches I've ever seen at IWC. It was Gresham against Josh Alexander. It went the time. Yeah, it went the time limit. Just, it was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, that's so tough because. You know, that year, that match happened in the finals, and people were coming up and saying, you know, in 16 years, we don't think we've seen – that may have been the best tournament final match we've ever seen. And then Gresham and Cole happened that very next year, and it's like, damn, I don't know which one you'd pick because both of them were just, you know, so incredible. And, you know, in June in there – so now Court Time has brand new air conditioning, which is really nice. But their old air conditioning, when you get like four or 500 people in there – didn't always do the job very well. I mean, it's not like some of these other places where you're ready to have a heat stroke, but it's uh, it gets warm. And, you know, these guys are in their third match of the night. So in both of those matches, you know, you see how incredible they did, but you got to remember they're banged up as hell from their first two matches. And if you look at the canvas in those matches, like the sweat that's just stained throughout the entire thing, it's like these guys, like they're coming here to Pittsburgh. They're wrestling all over the world. And they're on the brink. A lot of these guys within a year or two are on television somewhere. They're on the brink of making it. They're coming to Pittsburgh to wrestle in the Super Indy Tournament, and they're not messing around. They're literally leaving pounds of sweat and blood in that ring uh, to give the Pittsburgh fans and the IWC fans everything that they can. And that's what's so special about this one night is that guys from all across the country come in here and they hold nothing back. Yeah, you have many people calling you to get into this, right? You kind sometimes you have to turn people away, correct? Yeah, and that and that's just amazing to me too because it's just like it's almost surreal, you know, where where big big name independent guys are emailing saying, "Do you got a spot in Super Indie?" And we've even had to turn some down because it's been full. There's been other guys, and you know, I don't want to. I'm not going to name names because I don't know what I'm, what's, I should say and what I shouldn't. But there were people this year that I reached out to that actually had other bookings already. And when they found out that uh, the inquiry was for Super Indy, they canceled what they were doing so that they could come here. And I'm just like, man, that is awesome that you have that level of talent that really wants to be here. Because there's nothing better than getting a locker room full of guys that truly want to be there. Because the camaraderie and the competitiveness – and the emotion, it's just like surreal. And and you can't beat that on, on Super Indie Night every year. No, and that says a lot, again, to reverse about you two right there, that people are reaching out to be part of you know, one of the biggest indie promotions around. People say just in Pennsylvania, I, I'm calling bullshit on that. It's anywhere because you guys, noteworthy people, continue to come out from IWC. Well, we're trying. Okay, so we're at this point. Uh, we have a, a, a putting a plan together to try to get over that hump because the quality of wrestling is there. The production quality is close to being there, um, and the entertainment value is there. And, and we have a great team behind the scenes too. So 
uh, one a, a tweet that I saw from David Starr the year after he competed at the Super Indy Tournament was, you know, so flattering, but at the same time so devastating to me when I read it because he said uh, something along the lines of, if you haven't heard of the Super Indy Tournament yet, you need to check out IWC Wrestling. This is the best thing going in the country that nobody's heard about. And I'm like, that means a lot coming from a guy that's wrestled all over the world, not just the United States, but the world, that he just came here and said that. And that, and that, uh, you know, he, he did three matches that night. And it, he's another example of a guy that just put 110% out there. But seeing, you know, him say something like that was like, hell yeah, like we're doing it. But then it's like, yeah, but we're not getting the eyes that we need. And that's been a focus of mine in the five years that I've owned this company is getting on social media because I don't think IWC had a good social media presence until we took over and started changing our strategy there. And, um, you know, recently we're trying to just improve our production quality, our video quality, our video timeliness and stuff like that. So we've been making some moves to try to really uh, knock it out of the park. And Super Indie, this event, not only is it going to be a huge deal for us, because of the talent that's involved, it's going to be a huge deal for us because it's going to be our first iPay-Per-View event that's going to be broadcast uh, across the world, really, for anyone who wants to watch it. And uh, it's going to be the first time that we're, we're busting out some new equipment here uh, to shoot in uh, full HD. And we may even be doing this thing in 4K if we can uh, swing it here in the next week. So there's just a lot of things going on behind the scenes to make this the best possible product that we have and i would go as far as to say that this event may be the most historically significant event in the 18 year history of the iwc so we're really it's like all or nothing here wow uh, going into nice nice pun all or nothing as well um <laughs> i was gonna get to the eye pay-per-view but again you take my segues away so you can just host host can crush well, us next I week host this thing. that's what i'm saying <laughs> i'm gonna ask you the questions Go ahead. What, Who's the winner? Who's winning this year? If Britt doesn't win, we're going to riot. I'll tell you that right now. Well, I'm always up for a good riot. And you know what? If you really want to go wild, there is the uh, – for the for the people that are listening locally, there is the first ever official IWC wrestling after party at the Carriage Inn literally two minutes down the street, and they keep that kitchen open until 2 a.m. for us. And uh, between you and I, sometimes they keep the bar open a little bit longer than even that. So they really take care of us there. Uh, carriage in. You'll want to join us there afterwards. That sounds like a plan for Can Crushers. Uh, as, uh, Mama Can Crusher will be home, so Daddy Can Crusher can be out and playing. Hi. So what's next? Uh, we'll wrap this up because I know you have uh, some children ready for bed. This is recorded late. Uh, besides everything you just dished out to us, what is next? Where do we see IWC in, say, five more years? Well, I'm not even going to go that far. I'm going to say in the next year and a half, uh, it's really going to be a make or break 18 months for us. We're putting it all on the line here in these next – uh, you know, one to two years, uh, we're going big. Something I pride myself on is because when you get into wrestling and they say the only way to make a small fortune in pro wrestling, I'm sure you've heard this, is to start off with a large fortune. And uh, so when we got into this, we said we're, you know, we're investing X amount of uh, thousands of dollars and we're leaving it at that. And when it's gone, it's gone. We're not taking anything from our personal account. But at the same time, anything we make, we're not taking a penny out of it either. That's what our day jobs are for, and we're going to reinvest it. And luckily, we've been on a roll lately, and we're getting ready to just start cranking that all back into here. And, uh, you know, I already mentioned we're upping the production value. Uh, we're upping the production capabilities, and we're going to be trying to up the frequency of uh, national and international talent that we're bringing in. So, you know, a lot of this is still up in the air, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, because things just take time to negotiate but you'll be seeing uh so hopefully some pretty huge names coming in here uh for the remainder of this year and and going into next year uh and we added that casino show uh, down at the wheeling island casino in september yeah i should know that if i was a good promoter i'd plug the date right now but uh that's like kind of a i just got that deal done and i just landed what's probably our 
you know, we do the Meadville events. We do these other, they're called, you know, sold, sold shows where uh, sponsors take care of stuff. But this will be our biggest uh, leap. This will be the biggest star that Jen and I on our own have brought in uh, that we're going to get ready to announce uh, at Super Indie who that man is going to be uh, that's going to be joining us at Willing Island Casino. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun. We're working on some big names for July, and uh, I'm in the process of trying to get who arguably might be the biggest independent name out there right now coming in. And we're not messing around. It's not about you know anything but fun and continuing to grow. We don't want to plateau, so we're just going, here's another pun. We're just going all in for the next 18 months. And then whatever happens after that, we'll see. Hopefully we're... Hopefully we survive it. <laughs> but it'll be a hell of an 18 months, I promise you that. One more pun before I give Jenny some more time. Hopefully you're not all out after that 18 months, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, you know, well, just keep coming. As long as everybody keeps coming. Our crowds have been absolutely insane. Uh, to end last year, I would say starting in, you know, November, December, January, February was still good, but it wasn't a sellout. March, and now Super Indy, uh, all every one of those events besides February, which was still a hell of a crowd, has we have sold out all chairs at court time. We're not talking like our seating chart. We're talking like we had to pull chairs from the back. We had to go to the concession stand and take the chairs. We had to go into their wedding reception ballroom and take the chairs. So, you know, there's a lot of love there, and that, you know, that – there's a lot of love coming from us back to everybody. So as long as people keep coming, we are going to keep just pumping everything back into this. And so it's the most fun for everybody. Yeah. And it, it really is. If you leave IWC with the frown on your face, uh, you must've been sleeping for three hours because these guys, uh, between the plumbers and the talent they have, put on a hell of a show, a wonderful family friend product too. We always want to promote that, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't always control what people do when they're out there, but um, that is a very strict guideline that we go over with everybody before any event is that we have fans of all ages uh, and all backgrounds out in the crowd. So you just got to watch what you do. You know, there's, there's a way to still be edgy and violent without being, uh, edgy and violent. Edgy and, violent. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we've walked that line pretty well. I don't know. You know, Jack Pollock, he's, he's a little hardcore, uh, but he hasn't been around for a while. Unfortunately, he's, he may not be back for quite some time. It, 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 it turns out, but, uh, you know, but uh, beyond that, I mean, there's nothing, uh, I think that, that I wouldn't let my own kids come and see. And that's really how I judge it. You know, we let our six year old come to this and, if the answer is yes, we do it. If the answer is no, we say it, it, it ain't happening here. That's a good mom and dad. That's the, and that's the perfect way to end. Uh, give Jenny some final thoughts. Let her uh, get in this because you've now just talked for 30 minutes by yourself, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what happens when you keep me off. You know, I, I wait a year to do this. I got to get it all out. It's about time. You know what, Usually it's the other way around in our household. Usually I do all the talking, and Justin's usually the quiet. I told Jen if she didn't grab whiskey on the way home, I wasn't going to talk much because I'm so tired. But you know, you got me fired up with all these questions. And I, so. did, and I did not grab any whiskey. Oh, I thought you were having whiskey and a cigar, which is a perfect Thursday night. That's perfect. I know. Yeah, I hate doing these things sober, but I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him no choice. I didn't bring anything home. <laughs> Well, well, that's a bummer because that's actually our shtick. We drink beer and talk wrestling. You know that. I mean, you could just drink alcohol, but eh, nonetheless. So, <laughs> so plumbers, I will see you in one week from today for, like I said, one of my favorite nights of the year in wrestling, bar none. It, first of all, it's just seeing you guys, but uh, Super Indie has been one of my favorite pay-per-views, events, whatever you guys want to call it. Um yeah, we're pumped up here. Looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing you guys and looking forward to just a fun night, a fun night, an enjoyable night. 
for sure. Many surprises to come, I'm sure. Uh, one we didn't say is Christopher Daniels is back on the card, correct? Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta cover that, I guess, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a big name. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, that was yeah, that was one of those ones where you know we talk about and Jen, I'll let you get in here. No, that's okay. You're and, doing a great job. <laughs> but. That was one of those ones where the card was basically rounded out and the Christopher Daniels thing, you know, we're, we know a couple people that are, you know, kind of close with those a- AEW folks now these days, of course. Oh. And it kind of just came up and I'm thinking like, crap, I wish I would have known this a couple months ago before we booked the whole show, but I just couldn't pass it up. I mean, Super Indy 18, he was in the, I believe the first ever uh, Super Indie Tournament match, and then he was also in the uh, finals of the first ever Super Indie Tournament uh, versus Super Hentai, and so he, I had to get him back. And you know, he couldn't do the tournament just based on you know some things, and the, and plus the bracket was already basically full. But uh, we wanted to just get him on the event to kind of go full circle. This may end up being his last independent wrestling appearance. We're not totally sure about that yet. But I did know that if it was going to be his last appearance, I wanted it to be here to kind of close the loop on everything. So, yeah, guys, um, go take care of your kids. It's 10 o'clock at night. Stop drinking alcohol and partying on the back porch. No, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you for finally coming on the show a year later. Uh, you're going to be our first show of season two. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you for my first interview ever, Mark. You're welcome, Jenny. Thank you for getting that schlub beside you uh, to talk to me. Hey, when we if we ever do a round two, you're gonna have to ask Jenny about her Vader story and her gold dust story. She has some great stories. <laughs> we uh, we, we can always do a round two. We can always do a round two for anything that you guys have set up. Maybe I'll stay out of it and actually let Jen talk for a little bit. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> thanks mark we really appreciate it tonight so what more can be said than what was being said in the interview guys you heard them they are just great people step back from wrestling really i just want to keep saying this over and over step back from wrestling and the plumbers are clearly somebody that uh i want my son to hang around as people they're genuine human beings that love what they're doing, and they want you to love it with them. Uh, That's a real wrestling mark, as I do my quotations to get them in on this show as well. Um, they, They just want this to be enjoyable for everybody. But, now jump forward... What the hell is going to go on with IWC here in the near future? What is just an all in for um so much is happening of course we will have our super indie recap um with whomever i go to the show with but uh it, what's going to go on huge announcement about the casino show huge announcement about this huge amount i pay per views guys this is awesome this if you're not in pittsburgh or you're not going to be because you're traveling to Guam or wherever you're going, you can just pull up and watch IWC. And if anything, that supports great wrestling in Pittsburgh once again. It is bringing the palaces to the world to you. The Wardlows, the Dylan Bostics, the Katie Arquettes, the Britt Bakers where she started, the Eliases. Guys, this is awesome. And they'll be available all the time. Uh, I should have asked Justin that uh, during the interview, but hopefully you'll be able to go back and watch them. You know, if Can Crushers is on the road and I'm not at a show on a Saturday, which is highly unlikely, but I'll be able to sit back in the hotel and watch IWC so I don't miss out. Guys, there's times that I will give up regular WWE all the time. To go to IWC. The English professor and I found IWC years back. And we have just continued and continued and continued going to these shows. And it's not for the plumbers. It really isn't for the plumbers. We really don't like. We love Jenny. We don't like Justin. No, no, kidding. All kidding aside. 
It's the show. They put on a hell of a show. We do need a part two because we talked about Super Indie. There's so much more to talk about on IWC, on the whole level of IWC. Next time maybe we'll meet at a a restaurant and we all can sit down, bring the English professor along, and have a great IWC part two. So, guys, uh, Super Indie is... June 15th, Court Time Sports, Super Indy 18. Britt Baker's on it. That's all you really need to know. First women in the Super Indy tournament. And I'm telling you, I said it during the interview, if she doesn't win, we will riot. God, don't make me riot because I love IWC way too much. But remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Guys, see you next week. Happy Season 2.